Kasim is out of the picture. How long before we get Arash? The team arrived in Turkey a few hours ago. They should be in position shortly. Airfield's just up ahead. Let's go find this shithead. Priority is to ID a rush. Things go hot. beta and instant access to the woods operator pack in modern warfare and warzone
There are vehicles that make you fall in love with them at first sight. You just saw it. And you already want it. They seduce with their shape. Power. And gun length. But not this one. The Badger is good, but it's not so good that you'll like it from the start. So what is this beast, and how do you play it? You'll know in a moment. FV217 Badger. This vehicle resembles a brainchild of Soviet or Chinese engineers. Nothing really implies that this is a top-tier British vehicle. Well, almost nothing. And by the way, this armor hides the true British V-shaped 12-cylinder Rolls-Royce engine with a 37-litre capacity. Maybe it traverses faster than others. Think again. The only vehicle slower than the Brit is the Jagdpanzer E100. Enemies will easily run rings around the Badger on any kind of terrain, be it a hard surface or soft soil. It won't stand a chance. Distance is irrelevant for it. It sends shells exactly where the gunner wants them. The gun traverse angle is 30 degrees. The Badger can shoot at different targets without turning its hull. As a result, the risk of being detected is lower. As far as concealment during a shot goes, the Brit is outmatched only by the Swedish Ghost. Yes, this gun has small alpha damage. Yes, it doesn't have the best penetration. But the remaining characteristics are so good that you instantly forget about the first two. The accuracy and aiming time allow the vehicle to hit the most vulnerable spots of the enemy armor. The rate of fire encourages you to exchange shots with any enemy. And when there isn't enough penetration, you can always shift to armor-piercing composite rigid shells. It won't take long with this rate of fire. Every vehicle has its quirks. The Badger isn't unique in that aspect. And if you decide to go into battle in this TD, you should remember a few simple tips. You're slow. Very slow. You're unlikely to change flank during battle. Analyze the map and team setup beforehand. After you've selected a flank, select a roll. If an enemy doesn't have artillery, be more aggressive. Push to the front line, soak up damage. If there's artillery, don't get spotted. And start the battle by firing at the vehicles spotted by your teammates. Good concealment doesn't mean you need to hide in the bushes for an eternity. There is a moment in each battle when you need to advance. Who will do it but you and your 350 millimeters of relative armor thickness? You have a thick front, but your roof, sides and rear are no good. So hide your lower glassy plate. Don't expose the chassis. And absorb damage with your front and front only. The Badger is great, but it highly depends on your allies. You can hold an entire flank, but if there is just a single enemy behind, that will be it. So, monitor the minimap. All the time. The trump card of this vehicle isn't its concealment, armor, or speed. This is its game changer. And if you want to really enjoy it, use the best DPM in the game as intended. For this to happen, you just need to survive for longer and shoot more often. That's it. 
in the hands of skillful tankers, this vehicle can do what it was designed for. It achieves crazy numbers of blocked and caused damage. Perhaps not everybody can play on it. But this crazy badger is really worth every credit spent. We are Studio Centurion, a team of two developers and creators of Line War. We are making a new multiplayer strategy game where you draw visual commands to control units. It will take some getting used to, but when you get the hang of it, you can execute strategies, coordinate operations and play in new exciting ways. You never click on units, instead you draw points, lines and paths. Units will follow your commands. Set directives to move, engage or defend. Line War is carefully balanced. Units have a distinct role on the battlefield. Having only one faction makes it easy for everyone to understand and play against each other. There are only two resources and they are equally important. Capital is your economy. Earn it by conquering territories, building economic structures and establishing trade routes. Energy powers your tanks, sea and air units. Without energy, you become immobilized. You can checkmate your opponent by taking out his refineries and energy depots. Worlds are asymmetric and procedurally generated. Balance is achieved through a unique picking phase. It's a game within the game to identify the best starting location. Explore and conquer the world. Make good use of terrain. Construct buildings. Build your army. Use stealth units to evade detection drop behind enemy lines and eliminate your opponent. Save up for devastating rockets and wipe out your enemy to accelerate the endgame. In our roadmap we have technologies, 2v2, 3v3 and free for all game modes, single player modes and much more. The simplicity of resources, the traditional militaristic units and the visual command system makes Line War accessible to any strategy player coming from RTS, 4X, War Games and Board Games.
Welcome, Commander. Brace yourself. 24 new playable units are incoming to the battlefields of Crossfire Legion. You need to get familiar with those units if you want to vanquish your foe. At the end of the day, it is your army, your choices, your victory. Let's discuss the new additions to Global Risk. We're adding two new infantry units. The Grenade Trooper comes with a powerful punch. And for the more defensive commander, the Shield Trooper, who can tank early fights. Two new vehicles are rolling in. The Gladiator specializes in destroying air units. Marshall is a vehicle able to deliver heavy blows from a distance, but which retains high mobility. While this new tank will bolster the ranks, the Imperator will bombard from afar and help you create breaches in enemy defenses. Air support sees three new additions. The Rapier fights for air supremacy, and the Halberd delivers surgically tactical strikes. However, it is the Scepter that allows you to rapidly transport your units across enemy lines. Blacklist commanders will be pleased to make the most of these new additions to the cores, starting with two new stalwarts of the infantry line. Close quarter combat heats up with the Fire Ant or deploy the Jackal to help savvy commanders perfect their hit-and-run tactics. You can also count on three new Agile vehicles. The Beetle takes flames on the go as it quickly incinerates enemy structures. Launching area-denying gas grenades, the Scorpion will outrange most foes while the Centipede uses its powerful electrical arcs to heal and boost allies or slow enemies. Air supremacy is enforced by three new aircraft. The Prion hinders enemies with its EMP rockets. Pick off slow enemies and structures from afar with the Concorde and its explosive drones. The Albatross aids Blacklist's need for rapid deployments with its expensive cargo holds and durability. The AI-enhanced production lines of New Horizon increase their might with the arrival of these new units. Sally forth with two new infantry forces. The Ogre deals area of effect damage from afar while the Minotaurs wield hard-hitting heavy energy cannons. 
New vehicles expand your tactical options. Manticore's dual cannons can increase an enemy's vulnerability to damage. The Cerberus's powerful railgun punches through multiple targets in a straight line before teleporting to new firing positions. The Hades barrages ground and air targets with its explosive drones. Fire salvos of explosives and jump over obstacles with the Hyperion Advanced Mech. Increased air support comes in the form of the Siren that offers advanced support by creating a damaging and debilitating energy field around itself. While the Sharon reliably and rapidly gets New Horizon forces wherever they need to be. With these expanded forces, you will have to experiment to find the roster that leads you to victory. Commanders, friends and foes alike, we're looking forward to seeing which units you'll deploy on the battlefield on May 24th.